Welcome to Movie Caps. Today I will show you a comedy, family, fantasy film from 2002 titled Like Mike. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. Calvin and Murph are playing basketball together in the yard of the orphanage group home they live at. A group of bullies approach them, Ox being their leader, and he challenges Calvin to a game of basketball. If Ox wins, he gets Calvin's favorite basketball jersey. He ends up winning by a landslide because he is significantly taller than Calvin, and as soon as he gets his hands on Calvin's jersey, he rips it apart. The director of the group home, Vittleman, tells them it's time to go to the local sports arena and sell candy in the parking lot to raise money for the orphanage. The kids try their best to get the attention of passers-by, but are ignored by most. From the parking lot, Calvin and Murph watch the end of the basketball game, their favorite team, the Knights, lose badly. Afterwards, Calvin spots the coach from the Knights getting in his car and he approaches him and asks if he wants to buy any candy. When Calvin explains what the profits are for, the coach hands him a $20 bill, which Calvin does not accept, saying he isn't actually sure if the money they raise goes towards the group home at all. Instead, the coach offers him four tickets to the next basketball game on Sunday. At the orphanage, dozens of parents come in all looking to adopt and at first Calvin is hopeful that he'll finally get to go home, but Ox points out that the parents are only interested in the youngest kids, that it's rare that they'll look for the older ones. Outside, a nun that works for the group home brings them a box of donated clothes. Calvin finds a pair of sneakers and tries them on. He asks the sister what she knows about the shoes, and she says the man who dropped them off said they used to belong to a famous basketball player when he was a kid. When Calvin looks inside the shoe, he finds the initials MJ and realizes that they belong to Michael Jordan. Sensing that Calvin found something valuable, Ox takes the shoes from Calvin, ties the laces together, and throws them up over a power line. That night, while the kids sleep, there is a large thunderstorm outside. Calvin wakes up Murph, saying he can't stop thinking about the shoes. He says that now is his opportunity to go get them since everyone is asleep and Ox won't take them from him again. He convinces Murph and another friend to get dressed and go out into the yard in the pouring rain with him. Calvin climbs the tree next to power lines and shimmies along a branch to get closer. Just as he reaches them, the shoes are struck by lighting and Calvin falls to the ground with them in his hands. The shoes seem to be charged with some kind of electricity. That Sunday, the kids skip out on selling candy in the parking lot so they can pick up their tickets at the box office. Ox threatens to snitch on them, but Calvin keeps him quiet by offering him one of the tickets. One of the coaches convinces Tracy to participate in a little halftime show to try and convince more people to buy tickets. They call out a random ticket number and whoever is in possession of the ticket gets to come down to the court and try to score three baskets while Terry defends it. The more baskets they win, the more prizes they get. Calvin's ticket number is called and Ox immediately tries to take it, but Calvin gives him the slip and runs down to the court. He introduces himself to Tracy as a big fan, and then proceeds to score all three baskets against him. Tracy is upset and embarrassed because the whole court just watched him get beat by a kid. The audience is shocked and the man that helps run the publicity for the team decides to go talk to Bittleman waiting outside. They all meet back up at the group home and agree for Calvin to play a game with the Knights in exchange for giving Bittleman a considerable amount of money. Outside, Calvin talks with his friends about the contract and Ox overhears him say that the only reason he played so well was because of the shoes. Calvin arrives at the sports center and makes his way to the locker room where he is lightly teased by the other players and given a uniform to wear for the game, complete with an official pair of shoes. Calvin tries to explain that he would be much more comfortable playing in his own shoes, but the coach admits to him that it doesn't matter how he plays because he's only there to get audience attendance up. There is in fact a much larger audience present than before, all because of local curiosity about Calvin. He is benched most of the time, but when the coach calls timeout because they're losing, Calvin suggests a play it will help them win. The coach agrees to the play and puts him in, but he is too nervous to play without his shoes. He calls a timeout and goes to the locker room to get his sneakers. When he returns to the court, he helps the team catch up in points, and ultimately win the game. After his excellent performance, Calvin signs a contract with the Knights to officially play as a member of their team. He returns to the group home to pack and Bittleman confronts him about the contract, warning him that people will only want to adopt him because he's famous, not because they actually like him. Bittleman also reveals that a part of the contract he signed states that he isn't allowed to get adopted for as long as he plays for the Knights. On the plane to the hotel, the coach tells Tracy he has to room with Calvin, which Calvin is thrilled about and Tracy dreads. They get to their room and the kid is amazed by how fancy it is. Tracy gets ready to go out on a date and tells Calvin about room service to keep him distracted while he's gone, he ends up ordering so much he can't finish it all, and the room is trashed with half-eaten food and wrappers. 
Tracy returns later to the hotel with his date only to find that Calvin has made a huge mess. The date sees Calvin and wants to spend the night taking care of him instead of spending time with Tracy. After she leaves, Tracy and Calvin get ready for bed, but Calvin snores so loudly that Tracy isn't able to get any sleep. The next morning the coach confronts Tracy about how tired he seems and Calvin explains that they were up really late hanging out with a girl and ordering food. The coach scolds Tracy for staying out past curfew and warns him that if he does it again he won't be able to play in the next game. Calvin participates in several more games with the Knights, taking all of the opposing teams by surprise. He does interviews with the press, buys a bunch of new toys for the kids at the group home, asks other famous players for autographs, and wins the NBA slam dunk competition. Back at the group home, Ox overhears Calvin and Murph talk about being famous and playing for the Knights, and tries to steal Calvin's shoes right off his feet. Bittleman comes in and breaks up the fight, making it clear he doesn't want anyone messing with Calvin because he's worth a lot of money. At the hotel, Tracy says he's going to take a trip to the pharmacy before curfew so he can get some allergy medication and sleeping pills so Calvin won't keep him up all night again. Uninvited, Calvin sneaks into the back of Tracy's car and they rap and dance together to songs on the radio. Calvin confronts Tracy about a lie he told him about not having any family. Tracy explains that he just doesn't talk to his dad and doesn't want to talk about it with Calvin. Tracy goes inside the pharmacy to pick up his medication and the pharmacist that helps him is very attractive. He gets distracted trying to flirt with her and he doesn't pay attention when she tells him which pills are which. While Tracy leaves the store, he accidentally takes some of the sleeping pills instead of the allergy ones. On the drive back to the hotel, Tracy falls asleep at the wheel. Calvin sees that it's almost curfew and he doesn't want Tracy to get in trouble again, so he takes a spare tire from the back of the car, sits on it in the driver's seat and drives the car back to the hotel, crashing into several different things on the way there. The next morning, one of the other players tells Tracy that Calvin got suspended from playing the next game because the coach found out he went for a joyride. The other player has to remind Tracy that the only reason Calvin was driving the car was so that he wouldn't get in trouble for breaking the curfew again. On the flight back, Tracy takes the opportunity to apologize to Calvin and thank him for taking the heat. At the group home Murph gets jealous because a lot of parents have shown up only interested in adopting Calvin. He finds out that Bittleman had lied to him about not being allowed to get adopted while he plays for the Knights and confronts him about it, he admits to the lie, but tells him he won't like any of the parents there anyway, he tells Calvin he's going to round up the very best candidates for him, while actually picking the worst couples possible. This convinces Calvin that he would be better off staying unadopted and living at the group home. He takes several buses to show up at Tracy's house, which is huge. He is obviously upset and Tracy convinces him to vent. Calvin tells him about the math test he has the next day that he isn't ready for, the fact that Murph is upset with him and the fact that he doesn't believe that he'll ever find the right set of parents. Tracy offers to help by telling Calvin to invite Murph over and while they wait, Tracy attempts to tutor Calvin in geometry. Studying quickly turns to playtime as Calvin and Tracy smother each other with paint. Murph shows up at Tracy's house and joins in on the fun. The next day, Calvin talks to his friends about his frustrations with getting adopted and they suggest that he ask Tracy to adopt him. Calvin says it would be a bad idea because Tracy doesn't even talk to his own dad. His friends tell him he needs to help reunite Tracy and his dad, and when Calvin shows up at Tracy's house with his father, Tracy is very upset and tells both of them to leave. Because of the unresolved conflict between Tracy and Calvin, the Knights don't do very well in their next game. The game after that will determine if the Knights will go to the playoffs or not, so their coach tells them they'd better work out their issues before then. When Calvin returns to the group home, there is a couple there to meet him and tell him they want to adopt him. They invite Calvin to brunch so that he can see how well he fits in with the family, and Calvin agrees. While Tracy goes out on a date, he's distracted because he can't stop thinking about Calvin. Bittleman doesn't want Calvin to get adopted so that he can continue getting money from Calvin playing with the Knights, so he plans to sabotage his next game as revenge. He convinces Calvin to wear fancy shoes to brunch with the Boyds if he wants to get adopted and to leave his basketball shoes there. Calvin hesitantly agrees, and decides to leave his sneakers in Murph's care. Murph tries on Calvin's shoes while he's gone but isn't able to perform as well. He decided to put the shoes up in the attic for safekeeping. Later, Murph talks to his photograph of his mom and tells her about the shoes and how they don't work for him. Ox shows up and restrains Murph, and both Ox and Bittleman question him about the shoes. Bittleman threatens to destroy Murph's picture of his mom if he doesn't give up the sneakers, and eventually Murph caves in. Bittleman tells Murph that he can't tell Calvin what they've done with his shoes or else he won't ever get his picture of his mom back. 
Biddleman meets up with some shady characters to place a very large bet on the upcoming basketball game against the Knights. He convinces them he has very strong evidence that the Knights will lose the game. At brunch, the Boyds tell Calvin that they want to finalize their adoption of him the next day. Tracy goes out for drinks with his father and makes amends. Before the game, Tracy wants to tell Calvin that he wants to adopt him, but before he can, Calvin introduces him to the Boyds as his new parents. Tracy decides not to say anything. Calvin gets a call from Murph telling him about what happened to his shoes and that they're in Biddleman's safe. The game starts in 20 minutes, but Calvin is determined to get his shoes back before he goes out onto the court. He runs all the way back to the group home and convinces the other kids to help him tie Biddleman up with duct tape so he can get his shoes back. Ox shows up and is about to free Biddleman, but Biddleman makes the mistake of calling him an idiot, and Ox decides to help Calvin instead. Ox remembers the code to the safe, opens it, and gives Calvin back his shoes. Calvin and the rest of the kids get on their electric scooters and head back to the arena. Biddleman frees himself and makes a call to the men he met up with to try to get them to stop Calvin from showing up at the game. The men attempt to stop the children but are unable to succeed. Calvin enters the back of the building where Biddleman tries to stop him one last time, but he attacks him with his electric scooter and gets past him. While Calvin was gone, the Knights were losing badly. He shows up on the court and the coach wants to punish him for being late by not letting him play. The other team members convince him to make an exception, and Calvin tells them all that no matter if they win or lose, this will be his last game. The game resumes and Calvin helps the team catch back up. When Calvin gets tackled during a play, his shoes get destroyed and his only option is to finish the game with the regular shoes. Calvin wants to give up but Tracy convinces him to keep trying and Calvin is able to help the Knights win the game, meaning they get to go to the playoffs. The team returns to the locker room to celebrate and Calvin tells the coach goodbye. The coach tells him that Calvin will always have a place on their team if he ever wants to come back. The Boyds agree to wait outside for Calvin to finish up, but he ends up ditching them and going back to the group home because he isn't convinced that the Boyds are the right parents for him. While Calvin is playing with the rest of the kids outside, Tracy and the rest of the team show up with a bunch of new toys and furniture for the group home. Tracy tells Calvin that the Knights are now the official sponsor for the group home and things will be much better there now that Biddleman is gone. He asks Calvin if he can adopt him, and Calvin agrees but only on the condition that Tracy also adopts Murph. Tracy agrees and takes both of the boys back home. They have dinner and play together and then go to bed happy. The end. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this.